Hey guys, EBV Man here, and welcome to our PC build guide. If you've never built a PC before, don't worry, because we've got you covered. Now in this PC build tutorial, we're gonna be covering two things. First, we're gonna go over all the parts and prices while I walk you through the build process. Now second, we'll install the Windows operating system and all the drivers, and we'll be set to go. Now this is an RGB budget build, so let's go ahead and start with the CPU. So this is a 3000 series CPU. It's a Ryzen 5 3600, six core, 12 thread CPU with a max boost of 4.2 gigahertz. Now the motherboard is a Gigabyte X570 Gaming X. It has two M.2 slots, two USB 2.0 headers, two USB 3.0 headers, and supports PCIe Gen 4. Now for the hard drive for this build, I chose the Samsung 970 EVO. This is an M.2. Now if you wanna save 50 bucks on this build, you can always downgrade this to a 500 megabyte version. But I went ahead and I chose the one terabyte version. Now the memory I chose is the Vengeance Pro RGB. So this is 16 gig, 3200 megahertz. Now the graphics card we chose for this build is a GTX 1660 Super. Now the power supply we chose was the Segel Tip. This is gonna be a future proof buy. We got a 750 watt, which is definitely much more power than we need. But in the event that we upgrade the graphics card or any other components, we won't have to worry about a new power supply. Now the case that we'll be building this PC on is the Dark Flash BF5, and it's a mid-tower gaming tempered glass computer case. Uh, it also has an iron mesh front panel with two 120mm fans, but you can expand this to have an additional five. Now the very first part of our build process is to install the CPU, and it's super easy, but it could be intimidating. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to push down and over uh, to raise this little bar. And then we're gonna take our CPU. Now the important thing about your CPU is you wanna make sure that none of these pins get bent. And you'll also notice that right here there's this little diamond mark. Uh, that's gonna align with this little mark that's over here. So I'm gonna take the CPU and I'm just going to drop it in. You're not gonna push it in, it will just drop in. One thing though, if you have it in the wrong spot, uh, it's not gonna slide in by itself, right? So literally just rotate it if you're not really sure and then it will just fall into place. The key here is you don't push down, you let it rest itself into the slot and then all you do is you bring this little arm down just like this and once it's down, you put it back into place and now your CPU is in. Now the next step in our process is to install our M.2 SSD. So we're gonna take the Evo 970, we're gonna remove this uh, screw right here, lift this away and then you're gonna see that uh, there's actually a little film underneath this. And this film that's underneath this is used to do two things. So you notice that there's a little film here. When you remove it, it has um, kind of a, a sticky surface, but it's also insulation that's gonna keep the 970 cool. So we're gonna put this to the side for a second. And inside the box, there were a couple things. Uh, there was this little riser and a little screw. And we're gonna use this because we wanna make sure that when we put in uh, the M.2 that it is uh, nice and flush. So we're gonna take it, uh, slide it in right here just like so. All right, and then we're gonna take this screw and just screw it in place. So I've already removed the protective film to make sure that that has a really nice, good uh, fit on top of my Evo. And now what we're gonna do is just tighten the screw in place. Now we're gonna be installing the out of the box standard heat sink and fan that came with the Ryzen 5. Now the cool thing about it is it already has that thermal paste installed so you don't have to worry about that. Now before placing it though on your CPU, always know where your header is for that CPU. And you'll notice it right here. Here's your CPU header. This is where this cable gets plugged in. It's important to know so that you know um, how to position the fan. Now the other thing, I personally like having the AMD logo facing this way, it's towards the actual uh, IO shield. Now when placing it down, remember there were those first screws that were removed. So what I like doing is placing, making sure that I at least align one of those, the second one, and then the other ones would just like drop into place. So I just uh, put one there, the top one first, um, align that into place just like that and then the other ones will line up. So now I have it lined up and I'll go ahead and screw in those screws. Now the next step in the process is to install the memory. So we're gonna go in the first slot and in the second slot. So all you're gonna do is push this down on each side and each one of these and then align the memory and then we'll push down. Now once you have the memory aligned, all you have to do is push down on both sides until you hear that snap. Now repeat that same process for the next memory slot and then we'll go ahead and put the motherboard in our case. Before installing the motherboard into your case, you have to make sure that you have the right number of standoffs to support the board. So let's take a look inside. Now this motherboard is gonna require nine standoffs. So what we're looking for on the case is that it has nine, and you can see that it actually does. So all we have to do is angle the case in and then align each one of these positions that you see here, each one of these holes, 
with uh, the appropriate standoff because that's where you're going to place the screw. Now when I install motherboards, what I like doing is just putting it at an angle like this and I also like um, bringing my hand in on this side just so that I can support it as I'm putting it into place. Um, and all you're looking to do is make sure that the screw, this hole right here, aligns with the uh, that standoff so that you can screw each one of these points in. So the next thing is just to put in all the screws and tighten it up. Now there's two types of power supplies in the market. You have the modular and the non-modular. This is a modular one. What that means is that all these cables are separate and I can configure this to meet my needs and not have any extra cables, which makes it really easy for cable management. Now, you can get one that is non-modular and the non-modular will have all these connected and the only difference is, because you can get it with the same wattage as this, the only difference is that you basically have to tuck away the cables that you don't need. This, the benefit of this, it's a little bit more expensive, but it gives you the ability to have the cleanest build possible. Now, when installing the power supply inside of the case, make sure that it's always, the fan is always facing down. Now, based on the configuration of this specific build, these are the cables that I'll be using with this power supply. So I have a 28 pin. This is going to be for the motherboard. I also then have PCIe, which is going to go for my graphics card. And this is the graphics card that we'll be mounting on it. And that's going to go right there. Put this over to the side. Uh, I'm also going to add, even though I don't have any external drives, just because I don't want to have to take the, this power supply out to uh, connect this cable, I'm also going to connect uh, one just in case I ever put some external drives. So I'm going to have that right here. And then uh, the last one that I have here is my CPU uh, power. So that's going to go into the CPU slot here. Uh, and then the last is the actual AC outlet. Now connecting your power supply cables is pretty simple. So you see this little uh, notch right here This fits in this area. So all I'll do is I'll just flip it around just like this. And then you just wait for the click. So there's the click. I'll do the same thing for each one of these cables. Now before installing the power supply, the first thing we have to do is remove this drive base so that we have enough room to work. So all you have to do is just twist this screw here, move this over to the side, and then this is going to give us enough room to work with our power supply. Now remember for our power supply, we want to have the fan facing downward. So what we're going to do is just place it in, just like this, right? and then uh, this is going to go and flush over here, we're going to move it into place, uh, and then tighten all the screws. Now at first glance, when you take a look at back at this case, you're like, oh my God, what's going on with the cable management here? The back side, we're gonna clean this up in a couple seconds. This is not gonna be seen at all. The important part is gonna be the other side that you're gonna see in a second. So what I've been doing is, after screwing in the back of the power supply, using the mounted area that you have here uh, on the back side, I've been tracing where all the cables go. So I've been looking at the cables that I have and where they align on the motherboard. And the important thing for that is you want to do that so that you can bring the cables closest to the closest entry. You'll notice how you have all these holes all over the place. You want to make sure that you're bringing in the cables just in the right place so that you don't have cables running throughout entire, your entire motherboard. So while this looks like a mess and we're going to use zip ties to tie it up, wait until you see the other side. It's all about planning. So once we flip it over, we're going to see how everything aligns. Now check out the difference. Much cleaner, not a mess like the other side. And this is where the planning comes in. So this is gonna get connected here. This is gonna get connected here. This one right here gets connected here as well. And these get connected down here. Notice how I've already connected some of these cables just to give you a sense of how clean you can get your cable management. And I'll tell you, cable management uh, matters. So as you're looking at how everything is connected, it's just, it's just a delight to see everything in its right place and not having cables running all over the place. So the next step is to connect all of these in the appropriate spots and you'll see how precise the cable management can be. Now we're done connecting all the cables of the motherboard and as you can see here, this is a really, really clean case. So you don't have a lot of cables. The motherboard is really simple. The case itself is also simple. Uh, we have our audio, our LED, our power, our USB 3.0, and our standard USB connected here at the very bottom. We have also um, the cables coming from our power supply that we needed in order to power up the actual board and CPU are in place. And the next thing that we're going to do is actually connect our, again, our GTX, our GeForce GTX 1660 Super in uh, to the case. Now, in order to do that, make sure that this little button right here, these little, this little switch is pushed back so that things can slide in really nicely. And then what I did is I removed these two slots because this is gonna take up two slots. You can see that right there. So let's go ahead and install it and we'll see if this thing boots. Now when inserting the graphics card, you wanna insert the graphics card starting from the back. So you'll lock it in place first and then you'll tilt and push forward and that should lock it in place. So guys, the graphics card is in. We supply power to the graphics card. The next thing to see is if it will boot to post. So we're gonna go ahead and press power see if things light up. So LEDs coming up really nicely inside of the case. We're going to look for that BIOS to show up. And if that shows up, the next step is to create our media disk and install Windows 10. And we do have boot. You'll notice right here the message says 
It's just looking for an operating system because one hasn't been installed. Let's get into that part next. Now the next step in this process is going to be to install Windows 10. To install Windows 10, you just need an 8 gig USB stick. You go to Windows website, you download the tool, you set up the media, and then the next step is to reboot the machine but using this USB stick. And if Windows shows up, we'll go through the install. Now one of the things I recommend is that you do the installation uh, using your machine in, I would say, offline mode. So you're not really going to be connected to the internet at this point. It just makes the install much faster. Now as this is starting up, all we're going to look for is to the, for the Windows little um, icon or swirly effect that will appear in the bottom and if we get that we know we're solid and we should see the Windows setup screen next. Alright, next step is to install Windows. Alright guys, so now we have all the drivers in, we have Windows is updated and what we're going to do is just do a restart just to see what the overall experience is. Now I like timing, not from when I hit the button to hit restart, but I look at the point where I see the BIOS. Well, as soon as I see BIOS, how quickly does this thing load? So let's go ahead and go in to start. We'll do a restart, and then we'll see how fast this thing uh, boots from BIOS. BIOS, Windows Swirl. and logged in. It's pretty good, not bad at all. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this budget RGB build. And if you're interested in other build types, either another budget or a mid-tier or even a high-end one, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. And if you have interest in audio or video products, check out these playlists.